Where does he get those wonderful toys? Well, definitely not from Hot Toys, I can tell you that. Because if $20 is all that you can really afford, much like myself right now, trust me, things are not really looking all that bright for me either, then it looks like the folks over at Spin Master has something up their sleeve with their current 85th anniversary line for the entirety of the character of Batman. And as I've covered before, they got some waves out there for their 4-inch line that I sort of missed. I never really got into them that much, but I felt like this is a good jumping on opportunity with their new 85th anniversary line because it's very seminal. It's celebrating the character. It's not doing anything terribly gimmicky. It's just looking at the legacy of the character. And nothing speaks more about the legacy of Batman than the movies. And we got that wave one with the Bane from The Dark Knight Rises, as well as the Michael Keaton version of the character. However, that was the specific version from Batman Returns. The version that is also packed in here with the 89 Batwing. So it's a little bit of a strange kind of uh, mix and match right here. So I don't know if Spin Master has something later down the pipeline that will then bring us a proper 89 Keaton 4-inch uh, figure, but I digress. For now, though, you can see right here from the box, I kind of wanted to showcase just very briefly because I just love the classic nature of this box. I like that you got the separate paneling to kind of tell you exactly what's waiting for you inside, but I just love the aesthetic behind it with the classic yellow for the 89 stuff, which is specifically the Batwing, and then the blue for the Batman Returns, but with logos that definitely indicate that. Once you move past that, though, like I said, I like that little bit of pattern with the bat symbols there in the background as well as on the top. The logo for the 85th anniversary that's kind of uh, glaring right there with the reflective uh, applications right there in the corner. On the sides, though, it gets a little generic, repeating the same kind of template right there with the little logos, the panels with the yellow and blue. But once again, like I mentioned before, not only do you have all this legal stuff on the bottom half taking up an awful lot of real estate for the spin master stuff that they always like to do, but then you also got a sneak peek of what's waiting for you inside. A 3D render, again, weird for the Batman Returns, but then a closer look at the Batwing itself, some features, and to me, what really stands out that I think is kind of cool is that if you look a little carefully, especially with the yellow of the Batwing background, you can see an awful lot of that comic book stencil pattern that they got going on there in the back that I really do like. And I wish we could get a closer look at that. But when you look at the top, you again get the bat symbols right there, as well as the Batman logo, Momo Jumbo. And then on the bottom, you have a... Uh the instruction booklet which is not really a booklet it's just the indication right there because obviously if this thing was fully assembled would not fit in the box but i still think that it's kind of cool that the box like i said kind of retains this level of collectivity sure it's not it doesn't have a window it doesn't let you see exactly what's inside but it still has this kind of compact nature to it that kind of reminds me an awful lot of the old school stuff from like i said the 80s early to mid 90s especially as i started to get interested in figures when I was like four or five years old. I kind of remember this kind of aesthetic kind of taking up the shelves whenever my mom would take me on over to Toys R Us and I would get myself that new uh, Dragon Zord from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So it's kind of a callback to that, but it's time to move past that and get down to what's awaiting inside. Dun, 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 dun. And there you have the $20 Spin Master Batwing from the 89 movie holding the Batman Returns Keaton inside. <laughs> he, who's already waiting for us inside of the cockpit right there. Now, that's probably the first elephant that I do want to tackle inside of this room here. Which would have to be the Batman that's included. Which is very easy to do so considering that it is in fact the Keaton Batman that I've already covered in that separate video when I was tackling Wave 1. It's the Batman Returns version, so he's got the much more armorized look of the suit, doesn't have the skin texture, it's got the paneled abs right there with the much more modernized bat symbol, and then overall it's covering the same basics as far as articulation, detail, the cape, except this one also has the weird look to his eyes, the very kookly look on the eyes that some of you did in fact point out in the comments was a misprint. And most of you are in fact right. There is a little bit of foreshadowment there to an upcoming review that's also Spin Master related, but I just want to make it clear that this is in fact a misprint because I do have evidence coming up in a separate review that the Keaton Batman from Spin Master is supposed to be looking forward and he's overall he's supposed to be a little bit better sculpted and painted because yeah I did see some other figures whether they be in my position or not that are in fact painted much better 
Furthermore, this guy is not only included in a separate white paper bag, so you have to rip open the bag and he comes thrown, kind of just tossed in there. So I was a little disappointed to see that he didn't come in the standard packaging with the card because it's very decorative. And I was actually kind of hoping to keep him mint in box and just utilize the other one that I've already opened. But to see that he was already kind of tossed in in a paper bag, I was like, well, God, screw it. You know, I might as well pull this thing out. And then not only does he have the misprint of the eyes, but also it looks like the mouth plate is a little bit more on the bumpy side. So a little disappointed that the toss-in for the 89 Batwing 2-pack is still felt like a toss-in. So it's going to be a little bit ex interchangeable as far as which one I want to use, either the loose one that I reviewed separately with the Bane or this one, likely this one. That way he could just stay stocked right there in the cockpit. But not much else has changed. All the other details are exactly identical. So you're not really missing out on much here. So looking past him, we're going to go ahead and move him on over to the side and focus on the piece de resistance here, which is going to be the Batwing, which is appropriately to scale as far as the way that it's constructed here. But it did in fact come disassembled inside out of the box you have the main piece here in the center and then the wings were detached so pulling them out of the box you're gonna have all three pieces separated and assembly is pretty much straightforward so straightforward that they decided to include that image on the bottom and that is exactly what you get as far as documentation but then you see before you right here the overall construction that is actually evoking the feel of that 89 batwing very well to the point where that's kind of both its greatest asset its greatest strength and also its greatest weakness because on the one hand, it's replicating so many details that are really done incredibly well as far as the sculpting of the overall front of the ship right here or the front of the wing where you have the ears. You even have a few of these bumps that initially I thought was actually a flaw on the sculpting and the molding of the plastic. But then looking at some of the, uh, the images of the Batwing from not only the movie but even from some of the higher caliber sculptors and, and toy makers and, and figure makers out there as far as collectibles like Jazz Inc. and even Hot Toys. Although I don't think Hot Toys has tackled the Batwing. I might be wrong about that but I think Jazz Inc is the main one who has tackled it in the 1-6 scale. And even that version, as well as the model that they used on set for that sequence, has these bumps right here. Even though they're a little bit better detailed, the bumps are in fact still present. So that's technically replicated incredibly well. As far as also what, in my opinion, is my favorite part as far as the little details, the little minuscule assets to make this thing actually look pretty good for something that you get for 20 bucks, is the paneling happening with the wings. You see kind of like the little ridges and the panels panels and the separations all these little details to me really stand out and really sell the imagery of what Tim Burton was trying to do with the Batwing itself once we get to the back right here like I said that's where we get to both the strength and the weakness of how accurate this thing is because you have like these curvatures and these ridges right here that are supposed to resemble the jet exhaust from the back of the Batwing and it's replicated very well along with the little wings that you get not only on the long ones on the top and the short ones on the bottom. But this is where it becomes a little bit backhanded because even in that original 89 mo movie, they didn't necessarily have the highest budget, especially for giving a relative newcomer like Tim Burton the Batman property. And so the, the budget was a little bit on the conservative side. And as such, the Batwing itself, despite its nostalgic kind of approach as far as how people feel about the Batwing these days you go back and watch that movie you do have your scenes and your shots where you can kind of tell that it's a model and so here it definitely looks like a toy it definitely you know you then go back to the fact that this is kind of coming from Spin Master coming out of a box that's being sold to you for 20 bucks and you get reminded of that when you look at parts right here where it feels a little Fisher pricey it feels a little like a plasticky but Again, before you type in that comment, I understand it's 20 bucks. You just get reminded of that. You know, you, you don't get carried away with your expectations. I'm not saying it, like I said, like as a absolute negative. In fact, this is going to factor very little into my final rating, but it's just something to take into consideration. It's not like, oh my God, this thing is being undersold at a loss because of how accurate it is. No, it's still a Spin Master toy that you get from the shelf at a Target or a Walmart, but for 20 bucks, it's not necessarily doing too bad of a job, especially when you then hone in on some of the much more colorful details. I would even argue that this is one of the more colorful bat vehicles that I've seen from any company, whether it be Spin Master or McFarlane within this affordable approach because you got the little yellow stickers here to resemble the front lights. You had these little like white details to kind of symbolize kind of like these 
paneling and these little aesthetical details here on the top of the wings as well as a little bit on the centerpiece of the main body here as well as these two little dots but then to me my favorite little paint application that is not black would have to be of course the little red heads for the missiles that unfortunately don't shoot they're just there for show but it's still cool that they still managed to toss them in as well as whatever kind of details are waiting for us inside of the cockpit itself upon opening the plastic canopy as well as taking out the keaton should he be in there you can actually see a sticker here that's forming the dashboard and they did a pretty adequate job of decking it out the way that it looked like in the movie complete with the little uh, radar, the dials, the buttons, the, all the menagerie right there that makes up the dashboard, including the little screen right there to show you a little bit of the reticles inside to be able to hone in on the targeting system. So it's cool to see that they still added little details that I feel, yeah, I'm probably going to do the very ballsy thing right here with what could be argued as a hot take. This is something that not even McFarlane does sometimes with their vehicles. I mean, let's be honest, with some of the recent Batmobiles, whether it be the Tumblr, the Flash Keaton Batman, yeah, you have the occasional sticker, but even that sticker is a little bit on the bearable inside, and sometimes it's not even applied all that well. It's just kind of stampered on. The recent Tumblr that came with the gold label two-pack of Lucius Fox available on the uh, uh, McFarlane Toy Store... That one had a sticker that was placed just a little askew, a little off-put. This one is actually stuck on there rather tight and is flushed in with the rest of the dashboard piece. Even though I would have liked for an added little detail to maybe like a very thin piece of plastic to cover it up to make sure that it's there in place and doesn't risk of coming off when the adhesive starts to wear down. But apart from that, like I said, you have little details here on the side where you got some extra buttons and levers and things like that. Again, it's not the most detailed thing, and if I was to still come up with a little bit of a complaint is that once you do get the Keaton Batman and try to put him in there, as you saw there when I was removing him to kind of showcase him and indicate that he was the exact same one that you got from before in the separate wave, you noticed that I was struggling a little bit to pull him on. That's because he gets kind of stuck in there. And the reason for why he gets stuck is because he doesn't flush as well as I would have hoped with the extra bit of feet room that he would have in there. That's as far as he goes down, which initially you would think is not that much of a problem. And the canopy still manages to close all the way through when you pop it back in place. But you'll notice that there's barely, barely any headroom between his ears and the top of the canopy right there. So I would have liked it if he would were to flush a little bit further down with some extra feet room to get him to not only flush better down on the seat, but also he would look a little bit much more straightforward because right now it looks more so like he's looking up rather than he's looking forward into either the reticle, either into the computer screen, or just overall facing forward in a much more natural position, which is... Funny because if you go back and watch that movie, the way that he's posed and kind of, you know, reclined back, he did look like that, but he was still being able to look forward. And here, due to the fact that Spin Master doesn't exactly have the greatest articulation on his head, he can't tilt down his head. He can only rotate it. So that was actually one of the things I was complaining about in that initial Wave 1 review. So that comes back to somewhat bite him in the ass when putting the Batman in there inside of the canopy. But once you flush him down there, it does complete the ensemble. And to also complement the vehicle further, you got fully retracting landing gear here at the bottom where you are missing quite a bit of detail. This is where, again, it reminds you that you are still dealing with the Spin Master toy, especially when it comes to the wings. I kind of wish that they were a bit better fleshed out because once you get to the bottom here, you see how they're kind of sliced off into like halves of wings so you have all this hollow real estate that could have been filled in a little bit better taken advantage of if you will and right here you're missing complete lack of detail granted you're not going to really see it that much you have your of course your legal stamps right there with the copyright and then everything else is just kind of generic so you're not really seeing anything too crazy would have added some extra little stickers or paint decals or just something to amplify the look of the vehicle but at the same time i get why they didn't do it it's mainly going to be like this so you're not really missing out on too much but what is waiting for you down here however are these pieces of landing gear that you can kind of push down to get them to flush down and make it look a bit more natural like the Batwing. And you notice right there that it snaps in place pretty firmly. So I like that they're tight enough to be able to hold in place, whether it be kind of tucked away or peering out so that he is so that the whole entire bat wing is able to flush up against the surface still would have liked if maybe some of these wheels were separate pieces so it's able to actually kind of 
tread on a surface somewhat. And I, I honestly don't know why they didn't do it. I feel like that's a very easy thing to do at very little cost to just kind of separate. I'm not asking for anything terribly fancy as far as like glass plastic or, you know, like a separate form of harder plastic for the wheels. Just take this exact plastic and just chisel, chisel it off into separate pieces to make it sure that it can actually roll on a surface. But I digress. Apart from that, though, you have all these little details right here. And when you flip it back towards the top right here, this is something, another little fine detail that kind of grabbed my attention in a very positive way. Before you think that I'm completely lambasting this thing here, for 20 bucks and seeing it from the top here and seeing how it's able to definitely replicate the look of the bat symbol that even that original 89 Batwing was able to do when it kind of flies up into the sky, gets in front of the moon, and has that iconic shot. Yeah, I would say they did an effective job of really making sure that this looks like that 89 Batwing, where they pretty much took the bat symbol, made a ship out of it. Sure, you have the wings, you have everything kind of protruding from right here, the exhaust, the cockpit, the jet engines, etc., the paneling, but then when you kind of step a little bit back and you see the bat symbol replicated there, complete with the curvatures that you have down here at the bottom, the two on each side, and then the one big one here on each side at the top, complete with the the ears that form the front of the bat wing in a very protruding sort of way to, again, keep the proportioning of the symbol completely intact, that if you were to take something like this and either put it in front of some kind of spotlight in your man cave, so to speak, or in your bat cave, or to simply prop it up against a neon sign up on the wall, this would make a fine piece to decorate said wall next to maybe Detoffs holding in your McFarlane figures, holding your Hot Toys uh, figures that are from Batman properties, whether it be that new 2.0 deluxe Keaton Batman that just got released. I would say the Batwing is definitely serviceable as a toy. For 20 bucks, you're not really spending on too much, especially if you're getting this for a child and they're kind of doing the whole zhoo zhoo noises and just pretending to fly it around. But for the much more adult collector, I would say that for 20 bucks, I don't know exactly what you're expecting as far as collectability because you definitely have details and facets of it, about it that remind you that you're buying a $20 Spin Master vehicle. Especially when you take a, a closer look at the thrown-in uh, Keaton Batman that you've already gotten before and could have been done a little bit better as far as packa packaging. And there's still a little bit of a jury uh, kind of held out as far as some of the little qualms that I had with the Batwing as far as added applications that they probably could have done at last minute, especially with the wheels being able to rotate. Or maybe having a way to detach the wing should I want to box this thing back up because... I'm already giving the wings a bit of a pull, and it feels like they're kind of fastened in there almost permanently. And I'm kind of afraid to give them an extra tug and probably risk at breaking them. So it looks like this is how the Batwing is going to stay out of box. But if you don't mind that, I would say that for 20 bucks, you're getting yourself a really good addition to your Batcave and use it as a decorative piece to not only replicate that iconic shot from the 89 Batman movie, but also still kind of own a little bit of a piece of that legacy that Spin Master looked at and said, yeah, we're fans of the mo movie too, and we're going to give you an affordable option to own your very own Batwing. It may not be to s the most detailed, the most robust thing ever, but it's very difficult to look at this and go, yeah, I regret spending that 20 bucks because I most certainly do not. And even with my nitpicks aside, yeah, I would say that this is a very solid 8 out of 10 Batwing vehicle, and it only makes me kind of curious to see if maybe the reason for why they tossed in the Batman Returns Keaton Batman in here is because maybe that proper 89 Keaton Spin Master Forge figure is going to come bundled with a Batmobile vehicle. And frankly, if this is how their Batwing turns out, I'm kind of signed up for what they have in store for a potential uh, 89 Keaton Batmobile complete with maybe the armorized kind of shell to put on top, maybe an open cockpit, maybe, ah, I was going to say, maybe some of those machine guns, but who am I kidding? If McFarlane can't do it, what makes you think that Spin Master is going to be able to do so as well? If memory serves right, this little compartment right here is supposed to open up and have little machine guns. 
and Lord knows that we're not getting that anytime soon. But do you guys think that this kind of opens the floodgates for potential vehicles to come later down the future the way that maybe McFarlane is doing for their 7 inch line? Maybe Spin Master will be tackling a similar kind of approach because we got the Batwing now. Who's to say that they won't do an 89 Batmobile to go with those 4 inches? Maybe... Wait, phrasing. <laughs> Maybe with the 30th anniversary coming up, they got the Batman Forever Batmobile coming up pretty soon, even though McFarlane just got theirs kind of starting to ship out now recently so time will tell if maybe spin master wouldn't want to step on those toes and if that's the case maybe they can pivot and maybe give us the batflake batmobile since mcfarlane hasn't tackled that yet or maybe something from the video games i don't know but i feel like this could maybe give us a a in-depth look at the potential of what they can give us for an affordable price at 20 30 bucks I would say that this is not a bad investment, but what do you guys think? Do you guys have a form of wish list of vehicles that you would like to see Spin Master tackle for Batman? Let me know down below, and as always, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. If not, hit the thumbs down. Huge shout out to our executive producers over at the level 2 tier, Tom Bolin. And as always, stay humble. I'll catch you guys later.